think some of you need to hear this morning, hey, you're a winner either way. Amen. Right. Whether you got a job, whether you don't have a job, whether you got cancer, whether you don't have cancer, whether you tore up, whether you not tore up, whether your life's in shambles. Hey, if you're saved this morning, I thank God you're a winner either way. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm on the winning side. Amen. Hey, God is in full control this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Merle, for following the Lord. Thank you, whoever asked Miss Merle to sing that song for following the Lord. Y'all turn over to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And then I'm sitting here saying, oh, we ought to change up the song. And then the song talks about stepping into the water. <laughs> Way down a little bit deeper. God knows what he's doing. You know, you're not going to be on the winning side until you step out into the water. That's right. Way down a little bit deeper. Get out there. Get your feet wet. Get your legs wet. Get your shins wet. Get your knees wet. Get your calves wet. Hey, let's go ahead and get wet for Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. Hey, get out in the water this morning. Do a little work for him this morning. Amen. 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 We're on the winning side. Hallelujah. Amen. First Samuel chapter number 17. Brother Clyde, you pray for us. Thank you, Lord, Father God, as we come to you, Lord, we come to you with thankful hearts. Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for the message that was already here. Lord, yes, Lord. Lord. We just pray that you would be with Richard and David as he stands before us this morning and give us the word of life, Lord. And Father, we just pray that you would hide him behind us. Lord, yes, Lord. That he would bring it for what we need, Lord. And Father, we just thank you most of all for who you are, Lord. And Thank you for loving us like you do, Lord. And Father, we just pray for this one year, the day they don't know you. Father, we pray that this would be the day that they come to know you. Because we're running out of time, Lord. And Father, we just pray that all that are not saved would come to know you before it's too late. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is one of the most famous stories in the Bible. I'm not even going to read it. We're going to get into it in a minute when I start preaching. But I ain't going to read the whole story. I'm going to give it to you paraphrasing. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. You've got a little boy by the name of David. Aiken, come here. Or Alec, come here. you got a little boy by the name of David. Oh, man. Chris ain't here, so Jason's in the back. My plan just backfired. Uh -oh. <laughs> stand right here. Just stand there for a minute. I need somebody big and tall. Who wants to? Go ahead, Robbie. Hey, you, you, you're big. You're big. That works. <laughs> he tried to get out of it. Nice try. All right. Let me ask you all this. Okay? He's not tall. We know that Goliath was tall. Let me ask you this. You look at Alec. You look at Robbie. Who's going to win this fight? <laughs> well, duh. Look at I mean, show them off. Show them off. Turn around. Turn around. Tyler, make Tyler check. Turn around. Show them off. There you go. All right. Show yours off. Let's see what you got. Yeah. There you go. All right, y'all get the picture. You've got David. You've got Goliath. David is just a poor shepherd boy. He ain't got nothing going for him. He has, he has no idea what, what's getting ready to happen. And yet he's following the Lord. David sees this huge giant in front of his face that he's got to knock down. Amen. You know what David does? While, and we're getting ready to get into it in just a minute when we actually study the Scripture. But while everybody else is just sitting on their cushioned pew, amen, amen, while the rest of the men are sitting on their cushioned pews, amen, and while the king is just sitting back scared to death and to lead, amen, where he's just as tall as Goliath if you study your Bible, the only reason that Saul was voted in as to be king was because of his height. Amen? That's the re very reason he said because he was head and shoulders above the rest. He was taller than everybody else. Therefore, that tells me that Saul should have been standing there as the king who was supposed to fight instead of little David. Right. Then you've got this little boy who his parents didn't want him. You say, huh? Yeah, his parents didn't want him. Why do you think all of his brothers were out at war while he was out taking care of the sheep? If you study your Bible, usually the one that was taking care of the sheep was the unwanted child. Amen? They, they were the ones that the parents kind of, you know, he was an accident. Let's put it that way. Well, he was, not, he was the youngest. He was the smallest. Wasn't ready for that child. I said, hey, let's put him out there. You wonder why that is? It's dangerous out in the sheep field. You know what he had to fight? 
He had to fight lions. He had to fight bears. He talked about it. He said, hey, I've killed them. I can kill a giant. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of courage we need this morning. Amen. I'll knock out a lion. I'll knock out a bear. And I'll knock out a giant. Right? You got your sling ready? <laughs> they had no idea I was going to do this this morning. I totally put them on the spot. I want you all to get the picture of this. You've got a young man here with a Philistine, a giant, that's got his legs guarded. He's got his shins guarded. His calves are guarded. His belly's guarded. His chest is guarded. His head is guarded. His, or his head, he says, it doesn't cover his face, but it covers, y'all picture the helmet that he was wearing as it's covering his, his head. It's not covering his face. Amen. God knows exactly where to hit you. That's right. right in the face. Amen. Knock you down. Exactly what it does when somebody knocks you in the face. You fall down. They hit you hard enough. And God knows exactly how to hit you. And he's got, he's got a big old sword. He's got a big old shield. Goliath's got a big old army. While the rest of uh, the Israelites are sitting scared, running like a bunch of little girls. Amen. You got this young man that's ready to step up and take on a giant. He's ready to fight a battle that shouldn't have been his to begin with. And what does he do? He trusts in God and he says, hey, I'm going to take my little sling that I've killed a lion with. Take my little sling that I've killed a bear with protecting my flock and I'm going to swing it. And he said, and then I'm going to put it in God's hands. He said, I'm just going to swing. You know what? Sometimes you just got to get out in the water and swim. Amen. Amen. And let God do the work. You say, how is God going to build our little church? You'll find out. Just sit tight. Amen. You just sit tight. God's already moving. Hey, the past two months, God's been awesome here. Amen. I don't know if you're feeling and seeing what I'm feeling and seeing, but I feel it and I see it. Amen. And God's doing something big here. Amen. amen. You say, well, we ain't really grew in number. No, but we've grew in God. Amen. amen. That's what I want. I'd rather have 50 faithful people that are ready to win, willing to serve God, than to have 500 people that would rather sit at home. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Yeah. We're growing in God. We're growing in grace. That's yeah. what I want. I want us to grow in numbers too, but hey, you got to grow in God before you can grow yeah, in number. Right. We've got to get where God wants us first. That's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. Exactly. You've got to get on the winning side. Amen. But he's getting ready to take his sling. Swing it. Swing that sling. Go ahead. You ready? You better watch out. Swing it. And then it hits him right in the forehead. You gonna fall backwards? I get it. All right. Y'all do it for me. Thank you. He's all in. I like it. He said, I'll lay down in the water. I'll just fall back in the water. Way a little deeper. Talking about being on the winning side. We're talking about working for the Lord this morning. Amen. You know what? Little David. There's some points that I'm getting ready to bring out that I'm sure you've never thought about. Matter of fact, I've never heard it preached the way that I'm getting ready to preach it. Everybody hear me good back here? Yeah. I can't hear me. As long as you can hear me, that's all that matters. There's a battle going on. And David was in the middle of this battle. Thank you guys for y'all's help. David is in the middle of this battle that David really shouldn't have been in. As a young man, he shouldn't have been out on the battlefield. He should have been back there with his mama and daddy being catered to and taken care of. And yet it took a child, a teenager, to step up and say, hey, we're going to do something here. You know what? Every revival that has ever broke out has been because of a child. You study it. It was a young person that stepped up and said, hey, I'm ready to serve the Lord. Amen. We had some young people that got saved this week, amen. amen. You going to step up and say, I'm going to serve the Lord? Amen. Don't let it stop there. No, Nope. Don't let it stop there. Hey, now you're on the winning side. Amen. Boy, you had everything going against you. The devil, the world, the flesh. Hey, now you've got power over that. Amen, Bella? Amen. you got power over that now. Amen? Now you've got the strength in God to stand against those things and to be faithful. You can do it now. You couldn't Amen. do it before. Now you can do it. You've got God in you. Amen? Amen. Right. We're talking about being on the winning side. He's in the middle of a battle that he shouldn't have even been in. You know what? For us, every single day is a battle. Amen. You want to tell you what my, one of my giants are? Opening my eyes in the morning. Yeah. You know what I did this morning? I jumped out of bed because the alarm clock didn't go off. And I looked at it. And I said, praise God, it ain't time to get up. I laid back down and slept for another hour. And then the alarm clock went off. You know what I did? I hit snooze. <laughs> And then the alarm clock went off again about 10 minutes later and I finally got up. That's the way we are. 
For work. That's the way we are for church, if you're honest with yourself. Amen. Hey, it was a battle getting here this morning. And I live beside the church. <laughs> it's a battle. Some of you, it's a real battle because you actually got to drive all the way over here. You got to actually get up earlier than me, amen. You gotta, all I got to do is just get up off my, get on my feet and walk over here, amen. Yeah. But you know what? It's a battle getting up in the morning. You know what it was for some of you VBS workers? I wish some of them were in here so they could hear it because they need it. But it was a battle to get up, come to work, and then come to vacation Bible school all week long. That was a battle. <laughs> you just like little David. Some of you come in and said, man, I wish this week was over. Man, I wish this week was over. Man, I wish this week was done. Some of you like, man, I worked all day. Been up since 4.30 in the morning. I'm ready for this to be over. Hey, what one day? Amen. It was yeah. worth every bit of work that you put into it. Don't Amen. you think so? Amen. To have nine souls saved, that's worth it. Amen. Amen. If only one soul would have been saved. Yeah. If nobody would have been saved and we would have just been planting seeds all week, it still would have been worth it. Amen. Amen. Because we're on the winning side either way. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm a winner either way if I go or if I stay. Yeah. If I'm a success, I'm a winner. If I'm a failure, I'm a winner. Why? Because I'm not trusting in me or what I can do or the works that I've done, but I'm trusting Trusting in Him and what He's already done. Amen. 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 Told those kids all week long, your salvation is not based on what you can do for the Lord. It's not based on who you were before you got saved. It's not based on what you could do after you got saved. Your salvation is standing upon what He's already done. On the cross, He said, it is finished. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm on the winning side this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, David's in this battle. Verse 16. Get ready to point out some things that you've probably never thought about. I'm not going to preach on the miracle of David knocking out this giant. I've already showed you that. You already know that. You already know what God can do because you got 66 books right here that prove it to you. Amen? Amen. I want to show you some things that I thought about while studying this passage of Scripture. Verse number 16. He's of uh, chapter 17. I don't know if I said that part yet or not. And I want you to notice in chapter 17 and verse 16, the Bible says, And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself, the Philistines, talking about Goliath, presented himself 40 days. Number one, there's the weight of the battle. W-A-I-T. There's the weight of the battle. Like I said before, every day is a battle for you. You battle against your flesh. You battle against this. You battle against that. Should I do this? Should I do that? You're always battling. Seems like we're always in a battle. We're not always in a storm. But we are always in a battle. Amen. That's right. Always. Then there's waiting. You know what a lot of people are doing? I want you to notice it said the Philistine, talking about Goliath, presented himself for 40 days. Where were the rest of the Philistines at for those 40 days? How is it that this giant can come before this army, supposedly God's army, and talk trash about their God? And say, hey, you serve a false God. You serve a fake God. Your God can't stop me. I'm better than your God. I'm bigger than your God. I'm better than your God. It's exactly what Goliath did. He stepped out on the scene for 40 days. And all those uh, Israelite armies were sitting there waiting on somebody else to step up and do the battling. You say, I'm waiting on the Lord. Boy, don't we love to do that? We like to wait on the Lord. Hey, He wants you to get in the battle. Quit waiting, amen. 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 Start fighting, amen. He's not going to fight every battle for you. Right. He'll take care of you in the storms, and He'll take care of you in some battles. Some battles you got to do yourself. Amen. You've got to fight it yourself. You can't depend on the preacher to fight your battles for you. You can't depend on mama and daddy to fight your battles for you. You can't depend on your boss to fight your battles for you. Every once in a while, you got to get up and say, Hey, I'm going to fight the battle today. Amen. Well, you're going to fail. Because you're on the winning side, amen. amen. But you can fail on the winning side. Every team don't always win. We ain't going to win every battle. We're going to fall down flat on our face every once in a while. But you know what? you got to get back up and start fighting. Start fighting. There's the weight of the battle. We got a bunch of seniors. Don't take this as being disrespectful. But hey, I'm proud of the senior turnout. We had more seniors there 
Almost, and we had young people this week. We had a lot. We, well, I'm proud of the senior turnout. I'm proud of the young people for, for being faithful. But in the church, and by the church, I don't mean Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. I mean the church. I mean us as a whole. If you were there Thursday night, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about us being the church as a whole, those that are saved. we got a lot of seniors that use their age as an excuse. Right. <laughs> hey, when I when I come here, I told you what you expect. The truth. Yeah. If that hurt your feelings, oh well. Got a lot of seniors that walk around. They saying, "I can't do this and I can't do that." There's something you can always do in the battle. You can always yeah. pray. Right. Yeah. You may not be able to jump up on a water slide and slide down, amen. But hey, you were faithful to be here, and I thank you for that. Amen. I thank you for your faithfulness. You may not be able to stand up and teach, amen, because you can't stand up for a length of time. But you know what? You were faithful to be here, amen. You may not be able to jump up and run and play football and, and do all the things some of you did, amen, Miss Pat. She was, she, look at us, I don't embarrass her. She was in there, man. She was in there. She was all in or nothing, she said. You may not be able to do all the things that young people or people that are younger than you may do, but there are some things that God has for you to do. He did not intend for you to sit on a pew and rot. Amen. 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 And we got not here, but we got a lot of seniors that just sit and rot because they use their excuse as an age. And then we got a lot of young people. They said, "Well, I'll let the adults do it." Right. Yeah. Hey, you know when I was serving the Lord, I started serving the Lord when I got saved at twelve years old. Started being faithful to church. Didn't always do right. I didn't always do right. But there was one thing you couldn't say about me. You you never said I wasn't faithful. Amen. I'd fall into temptation and I'd sin every single day as a young person. And a young person that says that they don't is a liar. But you know what? I was faithful. Yeah. I, I have a testimony of being faithful. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on him inside of me. Amen. What I'm telling you is if you're a young person today, you can be faithful. Amen. Amen. As a senior citizen today, you can be faithful. You can be faithful in your prayer life. You can be faithful in your walk. You can be faithful. Amen. Amen. And most of you are. Some of you are not. I'm a winner either way. Amen. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not trusted in me, I'm trusted in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I want to strive to be more and more like Him every single day. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is don't sit back and wait on somebody else to get in the battle. Get in it yourself. Right. Don't wait on the preacher to fight. Don't wait on the deacons to fight. Don't wait on the Sunday school teachers to fight. Hey, get in this thing yourself. Amen. Amen. You're a winner. You say, what? Well, I can't do it. Right. Say, I ain't got the strength. God will give you the strength. If God can give Sarah a baby at almost 100 years old, amen, he can give you the strength to keep pushing. Amen. He can give you the strength to keep going. Yep. You say times were different, but God wasn't. That's right. <laughs> Sarah's faith wasn't in her times, amen. Sarah's faith was in God. There are those that say, I'm just waiting on God to come do something. He's waiting on you to do something so he can do something. Amen. Amen. Is that you this morning? God waiting on you? Why are you waiting on God? Reminded of the story of the, the guy that was stuck out in the middle of the ocean. I'm sure you've probably heard this one before. He stuck out in the middle of the ocean. And this um, big old boat comes out. And they say, hey, we're trying to help you. Get on the boat. He said, no, I'm going to wait on God to save me. A big old boat sitting there. We're trying to say it. No, God's going God's to take care of me. God's going to take care of me. And the boat goes away. So then somebody, another boat comes up. And the same thing. Hey, we're trying to save you. God's going to save me. God's going to save me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to sit out here. And I'm going to enjoy uh, until God comes. The boat goes on. Then a helicopter comes by. They drop the ladder down. Hey, we're trying to save you. You want to get on the, on the ladder? And the guy said, no, I'm waiting on God. God's going to do something for me. He's going to do something really big for me. And I'm going to wait. Helicopter flies off. Well, eventually the guy dies and goes to heaven. And he looks at God. He said, God, why didn't you save me? Why didn't you help me? And God says, well, I sent two boats and a helicopter after you. You the idiot that didn't jump on. Amen. 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 Hey, God's got to work for you to do. God wants to help you. If you don't get involved, it ain't going to work. Amen. Well, you got you to quit waiting on God and start doing something. And eventually God will come right to where you're at. Amen. That's right. Not only the wait, W-A-I-T, the physical time, 40 days they sat back 
And finally, David steps up as a man and says, Hey, I'm going to fight this battle. Look with me at verse 38. There's another type of weight in the battle. Verse number 38 of chapter number 17. And Saul armed David with his armor. Whose armor? Saul's armor. I don't know if you know this or not, but and there's no Bible or anything in here to prove it against or for, but I don't believe Saul was saved. I don't believe he was. And if Saul wasn't saved, whose armor is he putting on? The world's armor. You want to prove me wrong, you prove me wrong. You show me in the Bible where it says that he was saved. To me, somebody that goes out and talks to a median and tries to get witchcraft, well, that's not saved, amen? And he had no, no fruit of salvation. The only reason that God made him king is because the people wanted it. And sometimes us stubborn people get exactly what we want from God, amen? Right. Which is a lost leader because that's what we're begging for. Mm -hmm. Verse number 38, and I could be wrong. When we get to heaven, we might see Saul there. I don't know. <laughs> and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he is saved to go, for he had not proved it. David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. I want you to realize the difference of the size. If Saul was the same size as Goliath back there, and David is the same size as Alec back there, amen, then you know what? His armor is going to be way too big for him. It ain't going to fit. You know what's going to happen when you put the world's armor on you? When you get protected by your little cliques, ha <laughs> ha, yeah, there we go. Get protected by your little friends, everybody that you go to that you depend on instead of the Lord. You know what it does when something happens? It weighs you down. I think of old Job who had three wonderful friends. So lovely and so great. Bible says that they went and sat with Job. That's a good friend, amen. I'll give them that. They went and sat with Job. Everybody wants to jump on these three friends. Hey, they had a good heart. They went to sit with Job. Most friends wouldn't even do that. Job had lost everything and he's wanting advice. So who does he go to? He goes to his friends, don't we all? You ladies, you go to the beauty shop. You ask the, the salon. You ask Tyler and Brooke, what do, we do? what do we do about this, right? You men, you go to the gun shop, right? You go to the fishing lake. You sit around and you talk about your problems. That's exactly what we do. Or you go to Bojangles. I can't tell you how many times I've went into Bojangles on a Saturday morning. There'd be about ten men just sitting around gossiping. Sitting there eating their chicken biscuits, amen, just talking. I'm like, goodness, y'all ain't got a lot. <laughs> That's so many times what they do. They sit at Bojangles and talk. But you go to your friends and you, you sit and you talk about everything. You know who you ought to go to? You ought to go to God. Amen. Do you know what's going to happen with your little friends? They're going to give you their advice just like Job's good friends did. I'm not crashing on his friends. Hey, they were there with him. That's what a good friend does. Hey, but a good friend can't give you the right advice sometimes, amen? They said, hey, it's your sin. That's the reason you're going through what you're going through. And it wasn't his sin. God was putting him through a test, amen? You know what? Oftentimes you get around your friends and you start talking about things and they start telling you to do this. So you go and do it and then you realize, I shouldn't have done that. I done messed it up because I listened to somebody else. Go ahead when you get burdened down with the battle, amen. Get in your prayer closet. Get alone with God. Quit going to the beauty salon and talking and gossiping. Quit going to the fishing lake and talking and gossiping. Quit talking to everybody else. You got a problem with somebody. Go ahead and get alone with God in your prayer closet and get down on your face and ask God to help you with it. Amen. He'll give you the best advice. Amen. Amen. Yes. Way better than any friend could give you. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with confiding in people further and further until eventually either you're going to break or you're going to And when you take it off, it's going to be a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Not only your friends, but the world and the effect that it has on your mind during the battle. Talked a little bit about this in Sunday school. And y'all say, oh, here he goes again. I'm giving you the truth. It's a battle that you fight every single day if you're honest with yourself. A battle of the mind. You have no faith in God because your mind's so full of doubt. Why do you think that is? If you turn off the news, you wouldn't get any. If you open up the Word of God, maybe you get a little faith. What you feed is what's going to win. I've been saying that for the past two months. But it's a problem. It's a problem. That's why I'm stuck on it. God ain't moved me away from it. 
Y'all pray that God will move me away from it or get your heart right. That way Amen. I can move away from it. Don't let your doubts keep you from getting in the battle. There was a battle in his mind over the weight of the battle. The W-E-I-G-H-T. That weight of that armor that kept pushing him down. The weight of that armor. Then number three, there's the weariness of the battle. Look with me at verse 28. And when I say the battle, I'm talking about everyday life, y'all. I'm not talking about going out fighting. I'm talking about every day's a fight. If you're honest with yourself, every day's a battle trying to do right. That's what I'm talking about. There's the weariness in the battle. Verse number 28. I'm getting ready to go on vacation, so we might go past 12. It looks like we're going to. Y'all pray for me. Verse 28. Y'all ain't going to get it from me, so i got to get it all out today. Verse number 28 of chapter number 17. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou, now, camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left? Those few sheep in the wilderness. I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Could you imagine the weariness as his family, his own brother, is sitting there saying the only reason you came down here is for your pride? Boy, that'll make you weary when your family jumps on you for trying to do right. I don't know about you, but that's the worst thing ever. When your family says, hey, you're taking it too far. And it's happened to me. First thing you get fired up for Jesus, and you know what? Mama and daddy's going to say, oh, you got, you've been brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these kids are going to go home, and that's what their parents are going to tell them yeah. this week. Mm -hmm. I know, I've been there. Yeah. My grandma was lost. She got saved before she died. But I'll never forget one conversation that we had on the way from me taking her to her cancer treatments. I drive her to the hospital so that she could do her treatment. And she told me what she was asking me how the church was. And I was excited. I told her we had gospel music playing. Usually she listens to country. But when I was in the car, she knew it was going to be on Joy FM. Amen. And I'm in the car. We're listening to Christian music. If not, get over it. Christian music or nothing. Amen. And uh, so we were listening to it and talking. And she said, you know, I think the church has got you brainwashed. Right. You know what my response was? Grandma, what's wrong with having a clean mind? Amen. You say, that's smart, elegant. It's true. Yeah. Hey, when you wash something, you clean it. Yeah. I'd rather be brainwashed by the church than brainwashed by this world. Amen. 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 Yeah. They're in a mess. Yeah. Yeah. I like my mind to be clean. You can have all that extracurricular activity stuff you want out there. I don't want it. You shouldn't want it either. If you want it, take it. You can have it. The weariness of the battle. <laughs> Your sins weary. They weary you. They weigh you down. You say, what do we do about this weariness and about the weights of the, of the battle? I'm going to give you three more things and we're done. I'll be quick. Number one, realize that there is a, call, a cause. Realize there is a cause. There is a reason. Even though you're weary this morning... Even though you're weighted down by the world, weighted down by your mind, weighted down by your family, weighted down by the news, weighted down by your flesh and yourself, even though you're weary and weighted down, and even though you're sitting back just waiting on God to do something, there are three things that we need to realize. Hey, there is a cause, amen. There is a reason for this. We don't just come to church just to come to church, amen. I come to church because there's a reason. Verse number 29. Verse number 29 says, And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? That was his answer to his brother that said, Hey, bless God, you are here because you're prideful. I'm not standing here because I'm prideful in my shirt and tie. Hey, I, I was lost and on my way to hell. Never thought about wearing a shirt and tie before the day that I got saved. Amen. Never, never would have thought that I'd be standing up here in, in a suit and preaching. Do you know what God did one day? He showed me that He loved me. He showed me that He would, that He died for me. He showed me that I needed Him. And when I accepted that, the change started to begin. Amen. It ain't me standing here. This is God trying to help Amen. you this morning through His vessel through me. Amen. Amen. There is a reason why I dress the way that I do. Amen. There is a reason why I talk the way that I do. There is a reason why I'm faithful. Because there is a cause. That cause is that people are dying and going to hell. Amen. 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 And that's the yes. truth. Yes. All over this world, everywhere we go, people are dying and going to hell. Yes. They're dying and going to hell. That's the cause. Amen. But more than that, there's a greater cause. And that was Jesus Christ gave everything up for us. Yeah. Yet we can't even give up our measly little TV time. 
Can't give up our measly little uh, comfort. Everything's all about us and what we want. The world says, my body, my choice. Hey, the day you got saved, you became a blood fault born again Christian. Your body's no longer yours. It is now the temple of God. Amen. Amen. It's not your choice. It's God's choice. Right. Amen. 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 Realize there is a cause. Look with me at verse number 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine hand from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know this is the cause that God, if there is a God in Israel. Hey, the cause for me to be here this morning, dressed up real nice, looking like a preacher, amen? Not looking like somebody out in the world, but looking different. There is a cause, and that cause is there is a God. I want you to know this morning, there's a God in heaven that loves you, that cares for you, that died for you, all for you to be saved. Amen. That's the reason. Hey, I want this world to know there's a difference in me. There is a cause. That's why I fight my flesh every single day. That's why I fight to get up to come to church in the morning. That's why I fight to do right, to talk right, to look right, to act right, to smell right. Because of Him. Amen. 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 David said there is a cause. I want them to know who God is. Yes. I want them to know who God is. Yes. That's why it's so important that you be faithful. That's why it's so important that you keep pushing and keep fighting. No matter the cost. Number one, there is a cause. Number two you got to realize who you're fighting for. Verse number 45. Verse number 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He said, Hey, I'm here to defend the man, the God man that you were talking about. He said, Every time that you said God wasn't real, I'm here to show you that you're wrong, amen. amen. I'm here to prove to you and put it in your face that God has made a change in my life, that God has made me different than the world, amen. amen. It's not about me and my change. It's about Him and the change that He's put in me. That's what this thing's about. Realize who you're fighting for. Hey, we're not fighting for Joe Biden. I ain't even fighting for Donald Trump. You want Him, you can have Him. I'll take King Jesus on high, man. And I'll take Him over any man, any time. That's who I'm fighting for. The world comes at us with a sword. The world comes at us with a spear. The world comes at us with a gun. The world comes at us with all these things that Goliath came with, came at us with. Hey, all I need is God and my Bible and I'm good. Amen. That's all the sword I need. Yeah. If you were there Monday night during our vacation Bible school and adult class, we talked about the Word of God. And I pointed out the fact that the Word of God is powerful. The Bible says that it's more, it's powerful, it's more powerful than a two-edged sword. And it compares itself to a two-edged sword. What happens when you swing a sword, amen? It cuts you. When I swing a sword, if it's two-edged, that means I take it like this, I'll cut you. And I take it like this and come back through, I'm going to cut you again, amen? Hey, the Word of God will cut you. That's what I'm fighting for, amen? amen. I'm fighting for Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. You ain't taking my Bible, amen? This King James Bible was died for. It was, uh, people died in uh, so that we could have it today. Amen. You say, oh, yeah. you say, uh, the, the, the other versions and this and that. No, I'm fighting for the, the King James Bible. Yeah. Nobody died for that new international version. They can't even count. As you, If you showed up one Wednesday night, you'd see that. I ain't fighting for the Koran. I ain't fighting for, for Hare Krishna. I'm fighting for God of heaven, amen. amen. I'm fighting for the Lord Jesus Christ, the one true God, amen. That's, right. That's what David said. He said, I'm fighting for the God of Israel. And I'm fighting for my God. You can have your gods. You can have your pride month. You can have your abortions. Hey, I want the book. I don't want anything else. Amen. The book says it's wrong. It's wrong, period. That's right. Number three, and we're done. Whew. Ain't you glad I didn't open up the church tonight? <laughs> number three, realize God is on your side. Verse number 47. Verse number 47. And all this assembly shall not shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give it into our hands. God's on my side. What you got standing in your place? Hey, who's who's standing there for you? 
I've got God shielding me, amen. Hey, I'll go right now and fight hell with a water pistol. That's how good I feel right now. I'll take my Bible down there, and I'll swing it at the devil, and I'll cut him both ways, amen. Hey, Vacation Bible School stirred me up this week. Seeing nine people saved, seeing the work that God's doing here. Hey, ain't nothing going to shut my fire down, amen. Y'all going to have a business meeting tonight and vote me out? Hey, I'll go ahead and come back preaching that Sunday anyway. Amen. This is where God put me. Amen. Amen. That's right. Realize who you're fighting for. I'm not fighting for me. I'm not worth the fight. You're not even worth the fight. Hey, can I be honest with you? Webb's Chapel Baptist Church, I'm not fighting for Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. I'm fighting for him. Amen. Amen. I'm fighting for him. And in that process, I may have to fight a little bit for Webb's Chapel Baptist Church when I fight for him. Right. Hey, but if Webb's Chapel Baptist Church falls, you know what? I'm fighting for him. Amen. If all of you were to say, hey, we want to throw away the King James Bible. We're done with it. We don't want you here anymore. I'm just being honest with you. I'm fighting for him. Amen. I'd take my Bible and I'd go home, wherever that may be. Yeah. I'm like Jesus. I ain't got nowhere to lay my head, amen. If I leave here, I'm done. No. Hey, I'm saying that to say this. I'm a winner either way. Amen. Amen. If we get in our car on our way to the mountains in just a few minutes and end up in an accident, I'll be on the streets of gold, amen. I'll be walking around looking at mansions, walking around looking at walls of jasper. I'll be up there with family members and church members that have went on before, amen. Hey, I'm a winner either way. Right. And if I stay here and I struggle and I fight and I have to battle every single day, I've got God. I'm a winner either way. Amen. Doesn't matter where you're at. Doesn't matter what part of life or what phase or what storm or what battle or what test you're facing, God's on your side tonight. Amen. That ought to stir you up, Amen. I hope you're ready to fight fight ahead with a water pistol. I tell you what, y'all stand up, change your plans. Sorry, I'm gonna do something.